Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Lorenzo's Lessons of Space. This is Lorenzo here and today we'll be doing something a little bit differently. I'll be uh, just designing, uh, launching and describing a satellite mission. Uh, and you can see how I do that and hopefully learn something from it. I'll be talking about various concepts along the way. But first we go into the design phase of the satellite. So without further ado, here's the vehicle assembly building. And the first thing we have to think about is what do we want our satellite to be made out of? Well, satellite is generally not manned, so we're not going for one of these, the, the manned capsules. That would be excessive. We're going instead for a probe core. And they, these are much lighter, don't require any gerbils in them to function. And uh, so are perfect for a satellite. As a drawback, they do require electricity to be controlled. So the first order of business is probably adding some solar panels to it. Let's have a look here. You can add two of these. This is the symmetry tool. If you click this, then uh, things are added in symmetry around your rocket, which is fairly useful since rockets do need to be very symmetrical or else they just fall over and explode upon launch, which of course we don't want. And uh, well, let's add some antenna on top here, which can extend and give our satellite a nice Sputnik look. And finally, to finish off the electrical system we're going to add two batteries to the side here so a fairly basic satellite one thing you might notice is missing is a propulsion system we do want it to be able to move if we want to change if we want it to be able to change its orbit or move away from debris it needs its engine it doesn't need to have a big engine so I'm gonna add the smallest fuel tank with the smallest engine right so this here is our satellite and you may notice I'm designing the satellite first and only then moving on to the rocket. This is generally a good design practice. You start with the with the payload, you think of what it needs to do, does it need to land somewhere, does it need to fly off somewhere, uh, these things. And then when you design that you can look at approximately how big it has become and then think of what stages you will need under that. Well, here below the separator we're first going to put this nose cone which will uh, facilitate the size difference because our satellite is fairly small and the rocket bits will be a fair amount larger. I'm going here for a small fuel tank and a small engine, a small but efficient engine. This is good for in-space operation like uh, finalizing the orbit, getting the, the craft to the intended orbit, not so much the uh, ascent from the planet. For that we're going to build a little taller rocket. I'm going to put two of these fuel tanks and a slightly bigger engine. Uh, these engines come in two different uh, flavors. One, this one here, it has slightly more power, but it doesn't steer. The nozzles is the nozzle is, is fixed. It, it doesn't it doesn't gimbal around. So we're going to go here for the gimbaling engine. Gimbaling is just a fancy word for rotating. It's a pivot. Uh, so we're going for the steering engine. Now this here is almost enough to get us into orbit, um, but just to uh, Get, get it a little bit of extra uh, trust to weight ratio of the pad, get it going right quickly we're going to add some solid rocket boosters and we're going to add three of them down here and those will help it lift off. A solid rocket booster is very different from a liquid fueled uh, booster engine which are the ones we've uh, been attaching to the rocket so far. A liquid, liquid engine is fueled by liquid fuel as the name implies and can be throttled, much like uh, the engine in your car. You can vary the amount of fuel that goes in and the resulting thrust will be varied as well. A solid rocket booster is basically a big can full of explosives. Once you light it, you cannot, uh, you cannot throttle it, you cannot extinguish it, you basically have to ride it out until it burns out, at which point we'll jettison it. Finally, I'm going to attach a few winglets here at the bottom, so while we're, sti while we're still in the atmosphere, we can then control the rocket. And as the final touch, we need the launch clamps, which will hold up the rocket before launch. Now we're gonna scroll it down so it doesn't stand ridiculously high up on the launch platform. And now the last thing we need to do is fix the staging so that the, uh, the solid boosters and the first engine, they light first. Then secondly, the, the solid boosters detach when they run out then the main rocket detaches and the small engine lights and then after that the satellite detaches and, at the, and launches uh, and, and lights its own engine. And then as the, at the very 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 last bit 
Let's name this one Super Satellite. That's good, isn't it? Right. And when I click launch here, we're going to the launch pad. Right, so here we are in the launch pad. My recording software crashed, so I'm reloading it from here. Anyway, you shouldn't have noticed that if not for me, if it wasn't for me telling you. So here we are in the launch pad and let's let's light this baby up. So and there we go. Yowza, that's loud. So you can see we're accelerating quite quickly and now I'm going to throttle down the liquid engine and as you can see the uh, the solid boosters they remain just firing on full throttle because they can't be throttled and the reason I'm throttling down the liquid engine is because we don't want to waste all our rocket power pushing away uh, the heavy thick atmosphere uh, we want to save it for later which is now because the boosters have run out and I'm going to jettison them Look, so we don't want to carry that dead weight up any longer than we have to so now we're completely on our uh, liquid rocket fueled engine and now we're about 12 kilometers up and I think this is a good time to start pitching over and I'm going to do so in the 90 degree heading which is uh, the same way the planet rotates and because we want, to, we want to be going in orbit around the planet and the orbit is around the center of mass the rotation doesn't have to do anything uh, to do with whether you can orbit it or not or how fast you need to be going to orbit it what the rotation does do is give you a little bit of free speed because you are on the surface when you launch that rotation um, that energy already is in your rocket so if you launch in the direction of rotation you don't have to thrust quite as hard to get into the space to get into orbit so that's a nice little freebie that we're going to use and this stage is now almost burnt out and we're going to dump it so it can fall back down to the planet and if we quickly go into the map view you can see we're not quite in orbit yet but our trajectory will take us about 108 kilometers up which is high enough to be in space remember the Kerbin atmosphere ends at about 70 kilometers so at the current altitude of 63 we're near as you can get to space so we can now just thrust, uh, well, light the engine first and then we can just thrust perpendicular to the surface to get that sideways speed, that sideway speed high enough to uh, to get into orbit to not fall down back to the planet. So, And while we do this we can open the map view and see what our orbit is doing. That's the beauty of this game, you can uh, control your spacecraft and see the planned trajectory at the same time. By the way, all these other icons here on the on the map, they are debris from uh, the other lessons and uh, little bits of recording I did. Here's a test missile. I didn't make a video of that, but you can imagine what its purpose was. So, as we've been thrusting now, we're going to reach an apoapsis, the highest point of about 200 kilometers. And that's good enough for a first orbit. So I'm going to cut the engine. In fact, I already did it. And we're just going to drift to that altitude and if you recall that I mentioned the probe requiring electricity when uh, when I was building it when the engine is on it makes electricity for us but if we look in the resource tab here the elect electric charge is slowly depleting and we did pack some batteries so it shouldn't be an immediate problem but it's definitely important to keep an eye on uh, because if you run out you run out and you cannot open your solar panels again and uh, you basically lost the spacecraft. So speaking of those solar panels, I'll open them now and hopefully our engine isn't too powerful that it will rip them off, which is a possibility that can happen. And now as long as we're facing the sun somehow, let's see where it is, if we can find it. Yeah, there it is, straight overhead. We of course have plenty of electricity and the probe will keep functioning. And while I was talking, we've reached an altitude of 130 kilometers, and we were aiming for 200, so I'm just going to speed up time a little bit and see if we can make that altitude. Right, so we're almost coming up on it. It's about at 180 now. So if you look back at the map view, you can see we're in a very high ballistic trajectory, but it will eventually come back to the planet. We don't want it, we want to go into orbit. So we're going to wait until the highest point and then boost prograde, which is the direction that the spaceship is going. And 
add on speed to our trajectory so that it will miss the planet and keep floating in orbit indefinitely. And once we've done that, we're going to ditch the, uh, the upper stage of our rocket and f uh, finalize the trajectory using only the satellite's own propulsion system. And this is useful because we don't want, uh, we want this pretty satellite, we don't want the big ugly rocket attached to it. We want a bit of distance between them. So, well, I figure 191 kilometers is good enough. We can light the engine again and finalize that orbit. So if we look at the map view, soon a periapsis marker will appear. There it is. And now we can cut the engine. And the lowest point of our orbit is now 143 kilometers. And the highest point is 320 or 319 and a half. So the next correction is we want to circularize, circularize this orbit, but without the upper stage of the rocket. So the first thing we're going to do is jettison that. We can ditch it away. And as you can see, the, the separator, it has a small amount of force, but not a lot, as we remain fairly close by. So in the real world, this would be very undesirable, because this upper stage would be orbiting quite close to the satellite and if it were to be perturbed by anything it could crash into it and ruin a very expensive very interesting science project so we are going to fix this by waiting until the highest point because then we can influence only the lowest point make it nice and circular and then we're going to use the satellite's own small engine to uh, raise the orbit and get us away from that spent upper stage so first accelerating time until we are there. We are at 100 times right now. It's a very handy tool. And there we are. So slowing time back down. And well, you have noticed we're on the dark side of the planet now, so it's quite hard to see the satellite. Fortunately, we can navigate by instrument. And here we are pointed nicely prograde. That's what this yellow marker is. And it's time to light this engine. high point is now here which is 333 and the low point is 313. Not perfectly circular but good enough for our purposes. And if we look behind now these uh, indicators here they, they mark the spent upper stage of the rocket. You can see we're moving away from them at a fairly decent clip now so this shouldn't be a danger. So now fast forward time one last time now so that we can say goodbye to the satellite in broad sunlight and then I'll finish the video. The next videos probably will be about uh, rocket terminology, like what exactly is delta V, what is a specific impulse, why is the thrust to weight ratio, why is that important on launching, those kind of things. If you feel like that's really boring, pop it in the comments, give me a suggestion what you'd rather see, I'll work on that, and if not I'll just go on and make those and hopefully keep you all entertained. So this is our brave satellite, it's been launched, it's got its solar panels. Oh! We forgot to extend the antenna. That's of course very important. And there we go. There we go, its little feeler antenna. Now it can radio its findings of space and sun and electricity back home. Isn't that wonderful? Right. And with that picture to ponder, I'll leave you to your day. Have a nice one, and I'll see you next time. This was Lorenzo of Lorenzo's Lessons of Space. Goodbye.